All right, so in the previous discussion, we were able to answer questions such as this, right, where we wanted to figure out the probability of given some number of trials, what's the probability of having some number of successes. And we looked at that for several different values. And then, um, and then we looked at the fact that when you have an inequality that you're going to have to get some range of values. So given, for example, that an individual decides to have five kids, um, the success could be either zero, one, two, three, four, five. So there are six different outcomes that could occur if we're looking at having a girl as being a success. So you could have zero girls and just have all five boys. Or you could have one girl. If I wanted to know what the probability is of having less than or equal to two, um, this right here, zero, one, or two is what we're looking at. So what is that probability? And the um, that's the one that we're interested in. That is some random event. And then the complement of that if you don't have 0, 1, or 2, it means that you're having 3, 4, or 5. So this would be the complement of that. So if I know 1, I know the other. Um, so the question um, presented, well, what's the probability of having not less than or equal to 2, but maybe more than 2? Well, I could just simply say that it's 1 minus um, his complement. Um, so it would be 1 minus the probability of A is what would give us the probability of um, A complement. So let's, before we get much deeper into that and working with complements, let's just do the simple one. Let's see if we can figure this out easily. Um, in an alternative way. So we did go in and create it. We did go in and create a list of values. And we were able to um, use that list to calculate the sum. And that list, if I bring this up, that we created. could be generated just by leaving off the exact number of successes we're interested in. But you still have to manually go <coughs> in and get the sum of 1, 2, and 3. Right? You still had to sum those up. And that's the point 0, 0, 025, 138, and the 299. So we did that, but there's a better way. So instead of using binomial PDF, which is the probability distribution um, or the probability value at a particular point. Um, let's look at another function that's going to help us get that sum. So if I just simply want the sum from 0 up to a particular point, instead of using binomial PDF, what you can use is binomial CDF, right? So the cumulative or the summing version of binomial PDF. And what he does is he essentially just gives you the sum of all of the binomial PDF values up into a particular stopping point. So I would do something like this, binomial. And if I want multiple values summed up together, I'll say give me the sum or the cumulative value. And what I'll do once again is say how many trials and the probability of a success. But then importantly this value here is the stopping point. And he's only going to give you a sum um, of increasing values. So from 0 to 1 to 2. Binomial cumulative distribution is always asking um, 
what the stopping point is. Do you want the stopping point to be a 1? Or do you want the stopping point to be a 2? Or do you want the stopping point to be a 3? So he'll only give you a sum from 0 up to some desired stopping point, but always starting from 0. So if you want a sum that goes in this direction, you won't be able to do it using binomial CDF directly, but you can say 1 minus binomial CDF and then figure out what that sum is. So more on that, but let's just do the simple version of this. The sum that we're interested in um, was, in this case, if we were to sum up to 2, that should give us our 46.3 binomial CDF take the sum up to 2. And if we do this, let's see if we get the exact same answer that we would have gotten had we not done the sum but just did it at one particular value. So let me do a second quit, get out of this, and then let's go second distribution. Scroll up and let's go to not PDF but C as in Charlie, cumulative number of trials is 5, the probability of a success is the 0.52, always has to be a fraction, and then the stopping point. So this x value um, is the point at which we want to stop doing the sum, so we're going to stop summing at 2, so it'll give me the probability of x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 2, and if I put that in there, hit enter, I get my point, oops, Let's cancel this. I get my 0.463. I want to use binomial CDF. And if I go back, um, let me pull that in here so I can save this. But that 0.463 is what we wanted. So there were two ways of getting that 0.463 we could do the individual sums of the probabilities, or we could just have binomial CDF create those sums for us.